the Arduino of the automotive world just got better, introducing the Electronics V3 from get to Byte Technologies Private Limited, a compact, affordable, user-friendly automotive development board based on the NXP S32 K144 chipset, featuring an onboard Sega Jailing debugger, Bosch BN0055 IMU and a CAN transceiver. In this video, I will be explaining all the features of the Electronics V3 and also explain how to set up this automotive development board to start your journey in the automotive software development. This video is the first in the playlist of the Electronics V3. The link to purchase this board along with other resources on this board are given in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's get started. The Electronics V3 is a low-cost development board based on the 100-pin NXP S32 K144 UA T0V LLT microcontroller, offering functional safety compliance with ISO 26262 ACL Class B. The biggest difference between the Electronics V2 and the Electronics V3 is the presence of the Sega Jailing debugger, through which the user can program and debug the board without using any external debugger. The Electronics V3 also comes equipped with the Bosch BN0055 Inertial Mass Unit Sensor, which is extremely useful for the applications like vehicle stability control, navigation and GPS enhancement, autonomous driving, advanced driver assistance, crash detection and airbag deployment, ride comfort and suspension control, etc. The Electronics V3 also comes equipped with a CAN 2.0B transceiver IC. This makes the Electronics V3 a complete development package in itself. The Electronics V3 also allows users to switch between 3.3V and 5V logic along with the ability to change the ADC reference voltage between 3.3V and 5V, making Electronics V3 extremely flexible for prototyping. The Electronics V3 is made in a breadboard compatible form factor offering 74 GPIOs for utilization of various peripherals on the S32 K144 microcontroller. The board also integrates an RGB LED along with two push buttons. Let's take a closer look at the Electronics V3 starting with the Sega J-Link debugger. In order to use the onboard Sega J-Link, the user needs to connect the Electronics V3 to the PC using the USB Type-C connector. Once connected to the PC, the LED will blink periodically indicating that the Sega J-Link has been detected. Please note that the drivers for the Sega J-Link must be installed in order to use the onboard Sega J-Link. The board will be shown as Sega J-Link on the device manager along with a COM port for USB to UART functionality of the debugger. Let's fire up the S32 Design Studio to show the debugging capabilities of the onboard Sega J-Link debugger. I'll be using the Autosar RTD demo codes created by get to byte which can also be found in the GitHub repo linked in the description box below. Over here, I'll be flashing the demo codes for changing the color of the RGB LED after an interval of 2 seconds. To know more about how to set up the S32 Design Studio, import example sketches and set up the debug configuration, refer to the video provided in the description box below. On pressing the debug button on the S32 Design Studio, the S32 DS will ask to switch to debug perspective. Click on Switch. We can now debug the code on the S32 DS through the onboard Sega J-Link debugger. Pressing Step Over will allow us to execute the code line by line. After stepping over to the for loop section, here you can see that the blue LED has lit up. We can click on the resume button to run the code normally on the Electronics V3. The microcontroller pins connected to the RGB LED are mentioned on the board itself. The Electronics V3 provides a USB to UART interface through the onboard Sega J-Link debugger. The TX and RX LED on the boards are used to provide indication for the transmission and reception of data to and from the Electronics V3 over the LPUART0. I'll be using the Sega J Flashlight utility to flash the .elf file from the example codes for UART transmission. On the serial monitor, we can see that the message is being printed and the TX LED is blinking showing the transmission of data from the Electronics V3. Here is a small demo example showing the onboard switches present on the Electronics V3 controlling the RGB LED. The microcontroller pins connected with the onboard switches is mentioned on the Electronics V3. Pressing the SW2 lights up the green LED and pressing the SW1 lights up the blue LED. Now, I'll be running an official NXP S32 K144 demo example for potentiometer. I'll be uploading this demo example to Electronics V3 through the S32 Design Studio over Sega J-Link. The voltage at the ADC pin C14 will be shown on the serial monitor along with a bar graph. The potentiometer can provide 0 to 3.3 volts to ADC pin irrespective of the reference voltage selected on the Electronics V3. 
Let's conclude this video by demonstration of the CAN transceiver present on the Electronics V3 supporting data transmission rate up to 5 Mbps and CAN FD. The user can connect the CAN bus wires to the screw terminal present on the Electronics V3. The CAN H and the CAN L wires can be connected to the respective terminals. The CAN termination can also be enabled and disabled by the user by the use of CAN term header present on the Electronics V3. Removing the header will disable the CAN termination. Placing the header will enable the CAN termination. The TX and RX LEDs are used to indicate the data being sent and received over the CAN bus respectively. During transmission, both the TX and the RX LED will light up. I've made a small demo example showcasing the CAN transmission on Electronics V3. The demo example will transmit 8 bit of CAN data on the CAN message ID 800 at the baud rate of 500 kbps. We can see the CAN data and the CAN ID being decoded by my oscilloscope connected to the CAN output of the Electronics V3 through the channel number 1. This demonstrates the CAN communication on the Electronics V3. The demo codes for the BNO055 IMU sensor along with other sensors and modules that can be interfaced with the Electronics V3 will be demonstrated in a part 2 of this video. The detailed guide of setting up the Electronics V3 is present in the user manual of the board linked in the description box below. The users can also check the playlist linked in the description box below for how to set up the S32 Design Studio and also how to set up the debug configurations for the Electronics V3 and the Electronics V2. The users may also check out our ever-expanding list of Autosar MCAL courses available for the Electronics V3. The link to our website for the courses is given in the description box below, along with the mobile app that can be downloaded through the Google Play Store. Start your journey in the automotive software development today by using our Electronics V3.